You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. I'm making good old stotty bread cakes today. Good old massive Geordie bread buns from that there Newcastle. And I'm going to do them two ways for you. And as this is a recipe from Newcastle, some horses will be getting punched. So don't worry, horse punching fans. And if you don't know the story of how people from Newcastle like to punch horses, stick around and I'll fill you in like that Geordie fella filled that horse in. But first, we need our dough for these studies, so I've gone in with 500 grams of standard bread flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of sugar, and a sachet of dried yeast, and that's seven grams. Easy standard bread recipe, this one. And I'm going to stir these dry ingredients up a bit, because I don't want the yeast clashing with the salt here. And once we're sure our salt isn't going to knack our yeast, we can go in with the liquid. Now I'm using 300 millilitres of lukewarm water here, but you can do half water and half lukewarm milk if you like. But to be honest, with 50 grams of melted and cooled lard going in now, there's no need for milk really. And lard is sort of like the olive oil of the north of England, if you didn't know. And let's stir all that up now. Just like I'll no doubt stir up the ire of the Geordie people with this video, but I don't want all my Geordie cousins to take it personally. I love yous really, you know. Just got my dough in my machine now, but you can knead this by hand of course, and you want to knead the dough for about 10 minutes and... Yeah, all this is just a bit of a laugh and carry on, Geordie lads and lasses, you know. I mean, my nana used to say that Geordies were just Scottish people with their heads kicked in, but I never subscribed to that opinion, to be fair. And I've just sped up my machine there to give the door a right good thrashing. And all this talk of thrashing takes me back to the 14th of April, 2013, and the English Premier League match between bitter rivals Newcastle Toon the Magpies United and Sunderland, the Mackhams and Tackhams Black Cats AFC, a game that ended in a huge 3-0 victory for the visitors from Sunderland. Unbelievable, Jeff. And after, like I said, around 10 minutes, we can knock the speed back down, and I'm just going to drizzle some oil in here, and that will stop our door sticking to the bottom of our pan. We'll be able to get it out easier, won't we? So let's get our dough in and start working with it, and first off, give these lot a left hook look. Ha, and these horses have just reminded me of the comments from the newly installed Sunderland manager at the time of that historic Tyneweir derby I've just been on about there, Italian maverick Paolo Di Canio, when he said that he wanted to be seen as a stallion rather than a donkey. And that must have really riled one particular Newcastle fan up, because after the game, as the furious Newcastle fans rioted, one fan decided to punch police horse Bud right in the face. And either he'd been angered by Di Canio's equine metaphor, or he'd just seen blazing saddles. But in any event, the silly sausage went to prison, and Newcastle fans forevermore acquired the reputation as horse punchers. Anyway, while I've been banging on, I've split the dough into two equal pieces, because I'm going to do these stotties two ways, one way with a single prove and one way with a double prove. So I've tucked up one half of the dough in a pan with cling film on the top of it, and I'm going to let that rise for an hour, and I've brought a floured oven tray in to shape the other piece. And I already sort of shaped it into a disc, but now it's on my tray. I'm going to roll it out until it's around 7 to 8 inches in diameter. And it should be a couple of centimetres thick when you're done with it. And make sure you go around and smooth it into a good circular shape with your fighting hammers. And once we've made sure it's nice and flat and smooth on top, we can cover it with oil cling film. And then you can leave that in a warm place for around an hour to rise. And this is the lazy version, really, because of the one proof. And if you like easy one proof bread, check out my Teesside Fadgies video, which is much better than this Geordie bread, to be honest. And after an hour or so, we can take the cling film off. And I'm going to mark this one with a fork. And these are traditional stotty markings. I've got a little friend watching me here. Did the nasty Geordie man hit you? Oh, and did it hurt? And are you ever going to Newcastle again? Ah, don't blame you, mate. Anyway, this is going to go in a preheated oven now at 180 Celsius or 355 Fahrenheit fan setting for about 25 to 30 minutes. And our second stotty bread cake dough half is ready for processing now. So the same deal as before, really. Roughly form the dough into a disc, get it on a floured baking tray and form it into a nice circle. And I'll mix up my metric and imperial measurements again here by saying that it should be 7 to 8 inches in diameter and around 2 centimetres thick. Cover it in oil cling film and this second rise will take 45 minutes. Get the cling film off, bake it at 180 Celsius, 355 Fahrenheit, 25 to 30 minutes with the fan on 
And I'm putting an indentation in the middle with a flowery finger before this one goes in the oven because that's also a traditional marking for some reason. And I'm also going to give this a general dusting of flour. And you don't need to do these traditional markings on your stotties, of course, but I thought I'd show you anyway. And what do you reckon, my mate? Does that look like it's ready to go in the oven now? And here is our first one proof stotty coming out now. And when they come out, you want to cover them in a moist tea towel to keep them soft. And while it's still a little bit warm, we can get it out on a grid to cool fully. And while I've been doing all this, the second one has been baking in the oven. And here it comes now. And I think this one looks much more appetizing, I have to say. And after the same tea towel cooling on a grid rigmarole. I'm going to cut this in half and show you it. And this double proof version has a lovely airy texture and this definitely doesn't bounce when you drop it. Although I have to admit that the finger indentation isn't the best idea as it sort of deforms the centre. It's unnecessary anyway in a modern oven and was probably done in days of yonder to help the baking process. Here's a single proof one. It's still a good texture but not as fluffy as the double proof version. But they do both still taste great, and with the filling of your choice, they'll certainly pack a flavour punch. Maybe not as good a punch as that Newcastle fan who shall remain nameless, but pretty good nonetheless. And I'm dedicating this recipe to the memory of Bud the Police Horse, who sadly passed away in 2020. It was nothing to do with the violent assault. The poor thing just got a vicious bout of colic while in retirement. Gone but not forgotten. Hey, maybe after Newcastle's recent takeover by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, the Newcastle fans will have to take the punching camels now instead. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll be saddling up again next week with another nectar recipe for yous. See yous later, then. Terra.